So now let's move on to deformation of solids which combines the principles of mechanics which we have just learned to materials. So deformation in an, on an object is caused due to a force. So let's say there is an object and let's just say that it um, is a pretty elastic object which is easy to stretch and compress. So there are two main types of forces so first is the tensile force so tensile force are the pairs of forces that are acting against each other so since they are acting against each other they cause the object to stretch and then there's one more type of force which is called the compressive forces so in the compressive forces the two forces act towards each other and since they are acting towards each other they cause the object to compress So now let's talk about Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that the extension of the spring is directly proportional to the load placed on the spring unless and until the elastic limit of the spring is not exceeded. So it essentially states that the load which is placed on the string, spring is directly proportional to the extension which is being caused on the spring. So let's say that you uh, in the first case have a spring of length L. The length of the spring is length L. But now what you are essentially doing is that you are placing a particular mass M on this uh, on the spring and as you are placing this mass M you might have guessed that this mass will be exerting a force which is due to its weight Mg in the downwards direction. So this force causes the spring to extend and deform. So as you can now relate, deformation of a solid, which here is a spring, is caused only due to a resultant force. So here, the force of mg is causing the spring to extend and the new length of the spring is something like this. So this is the new length of the spring with your mass m so this is the new length of the spring with your mass m and as you can see that the original length was l and now the spring has essentially been extended or has extended by a length delta l which is the change in the length which has been caused due to the uh, due to placing this mass m on this particular um, spring so overall you need to remember that the hooke's law states that force is directly proportional to the extension caused due to the uh, extension caused in the spring so if you have a spring like this and you place a mass m then it will exert a weight force which is the force the force exerted by this mass will be in the downward direction and this essentially causes the spring to extend by a length delta L. So this force is directly proportional to the, uh, the, the extension of the spring is directly proportional to the force applied but uh, only holds to up to a certain limit. So let's say that if this is again your original length, uh, original spring and now what I am doing is that I am uh, placing a mass which has a mass of 2m. So by Hooke's law we know that the force which is caused due to this mass 2m is equal to 2mg and by Hooke's law we know that the force applied on the spring is directly proportional to the change in the length of the spring hence the new length of the spring will be something like this so this is 2, uh, 2m and the new extension which is caused has a length or the chain or an extension is equivalent to 2 delta L. So as you can see that as I increase the mass which is being placed on the spring it increases the force exerted in the downward direction due to its weight causing a extension which is directly proportional to the force applied. So if a mass of M causes an extension of delta L then a mass of 2M which has a force of 2mg will cause a change in the length of the spring of 2, of two delta L.
but this only holds to up to a certain limit so let's say if i uh, apply a mass of 6m then it is quite uh, likely that the spring will extend but it will eventually break or not return to its original position so Hooke's law holds true when even if we remove this masses so let's say that now if I remove mass 2m from the spring then it will again return to its original length of L of L so Hooke's law for when Hooke's law applies even if you remove the mass the spring gets back to its original length so since we now according to Hooke's law know that force is directly proportional to the extension which is caused in the spring we can equate this in the following way F is equal to kx here k is essentially the spring constant so the spring constant so let me just draw the spring once again so this is the spring and if I place a mass of m then this m exerts a force in the downward direction of mg and it will cause an extension of delta l or just x so x is uh, represented as the delta l which is the extension so spring constant describes the stiffness of the spring how easily or how difficult it is to extend a particular spring so as you can uh, now see that if f is equal to kx then the spring constant is equal to f upon x and hence it's derived or its uh, units not derived units is the uh, units are newton per meter and in the following part of the video we'll see how the spring constant is nothing but the slope in the force extension graph of a particular spring So this is the force extension graph of a particular spring and we can easily uh, derive this graph if we have a particular spring and a range of masses like mass m then mass 2m mass 3m and we can then calculate the extension which each of the mass causes on this particular spring then we will see that as your force increases gradually the extension is directly proportional to the spring and this we have also derived by the Hooke's law hence up to a certain point there's a constant straight line or a line which has a constant slope going from the origin and this states that till this point or till this force so if I let's say that this is 9 newtons so till 9 newtons the spring is abiding by the Hooke's law that states that even if I remove the force of 9 newton the spring will get back to its original length but what happens if the force exceeds 9 newton so if the force exceeds 9 newton then let's for example think of a rubber band if you will stretch the rubber band beyond a particular limit and that limit is the elastic limit of the rubber band then the rubber band will eventually break so the same thing uh, happens with this particular spring so after 9 newtons it does not obey the Hooke's law and the extension of the spring is not proportional or not directly proportional to the force which is being applied on the particular spring so at this point this is the elastic limit of the spring so the definition of the elastic limit is the maximum force which can be placed on a particular spring such that whenever the force is removed the spring returns back to its original length of L let's now talk about effective spring constants so let's see that you have a scenario in which two springs one spring which has a spring constant of ka meaning that the slope of the force with respect to extension is ka and another string which has a spring constant of kb is attached in series 
with the first string and if you want to find the effective spring um, constant meaning that if you have a system like this and you are essentially applying a mass of m which again is exerting a force of mg so again the entire process of the extension will repeat but this time it will repeat in two springs which are arranged in series with different spring constants so essentially for finding the um, effective spring constant so let's say that the extension of both the springs is about delta l so let's take the extension after the mass is placed so extension after the mass is placed as delta l so we know that f is equal to the spring constant which is here the effective spring constant of both the strings times delta l so the question is what is ke so whenever to the two springs are arranged in series the effective spring constant is the one upon effective spring constant is equal to one upon the spring constant of first spring plus the one upon the spring constant of the second spring so essentially by finding this ke you just substitute the value of ke in this and find the whatever unknown variable is now let's take another scenario when two springs where two springs are attached in parallel and a mass is placed like this so this spring has a spring constant of k and this has of kb so again when the mass is placed it causes both the springs to extend and both springs have different spring constants so after the mass is placed the so without the mass the length of both the spring is l but after the mass is placed the both the springs extend or uh, the change in the length is described as delta l so again according to hooke's law we know that force applied on the spring is equal to the con uh, the spring constant effective spring constant times the change in the length so when the two uh, series or the when uh, two springs are in parallel so when so this is a scenario in which springs are parallel to each other the effective spring constant ke is equal to ka plus kb kb hence f is equal to ka plus kb times delta l Now let's move on to Young's modulus. Young's modulus. So Young's modulus. Before studying that, let's first learn about stress and strain, which are the basic elements of this modulus. So stress is essentially the force. So stress. So let's uh, take an example. So there's an object or a rubber band like this, and you have placed a mass on it. Mass. So this mass is exerting a force of mg and this is the cross sectional area of the rubber band. So the stress is the force which is acting per unit area. So stress is equal to force acting per unit cross sectional area which here is A. So it is equal to F upon A and its units are Newton per meter squared. So stress is the force acting per unit area and when this object or mass m is placed this is the original length of the rubber band which is L and when it is placed the mass is placed on this rubber band the spring extends by a length of delta L and the ratio so if the mass is placed on this particular spring then the spring extends by a length of delta L and the ratio of this change in the length with respect to the original length of the spring is called the strain. So strain is the ratio of delta L with respect to L. Since it's a ratio, it does not have any units. 
So stress is the force acting per unit area and strain is the ratio of the change in the length of the particular object with respect to the original length when a force is placed on it. So the Young's modulus is equal to or is represented by E and it's, e it's essentially the ratio of stress with respect to strain. So it's equal to stress upon strain which is equal to F upon A or let's just say it's equal to F upon A divided by delta L upon L which is equal to F upon A times L upon delta L which is equal to F times the original length upon A times delta L here delta L is equal to the extension of the spring which is represented as X hence I can substitute X in place of delta L and I get the final equation as the following F times the original length of the uh, object which is being elastically deformed. I think you cannot see this clearly. So let me just write this here. F L upon A X is equal to your Young's modulus. So now let's talk about stress versus strain graph. So stress as we know is the force acting per unit area and it's similar to the force in the previous graph of force and extension and strain is essentially the ratio of the change in the length of the object with respect to the original length hence it has no units and it's represented on the x-axis. Hence stress is directly proportional to the strain meaning that the force acting per unit area on a particular object like spring is directly proportional to the extension caused due to that particular or uh, in that particular object till the elastic limit. So this elastic limit is the limit till which stress is directly proportional to strain. But after this elastic limit the stress is not directly proportional to strain meaning that if I remove the force which is acting per unit area the spring does not return back to its original length so if I have a spring like this and if I just apply a force of 6m and it will extend but 6m then it will extend a particular length of delta L but once I remove the spring of the or this mass the spring will not return back to its original length of L it has gotten deformed so now as you can see that this gives us two regions first is the area under the curve of the stress strain graph till the elastic limit and the second is the area under the curve of the stress strain graph till the breaking point so breaking point is the maximum force uh, which is applied on a particular object after which the object does not exist it's broken essentially so the area under the elastic limit is called the elastic region so this is essentially the elastic region so this is the uh, elastic region and this is the plastic region plastic region so elastic region is the region in which the elastic deformation of the object takes place meaning even if the deformed forces are removed the object returns back to its original length because stress is directly proportional to strain and Hooke's law applies but plastic deformation is when the deformed forces are removed the object does not return to its original length because the Hooke's law is not applying and the force has exceeded the elastic limit which is here and hence the object has been permanently deformed. So now let's talk about the strain energy. So strain as a term we described that it's the ratio of the change in the length of the elastically deformed object with respect to its original length. So this is equal to the strain. So strain energy is essentially the work done by a particular object when it's elastically deformed. So let's say that this is a spring 
and this has an original length of L and the, when we place a mass of M this is exerting a force in the downward direction Mg which is causing the spring to deform since the force and the extension or uh, the displacement of the spring is in the same direction there is some component of work which is being uh, acting in this entire system so the new extension due to this is equal to delta L and the force which is exerting is equal to mg so this work which the object does to elastically deform the spring is called the strain energy so strain energy is the area under the curve of the force extension graph so if you have a force extension graph for an object which is elastically deformed so elastical elastical elastically deformation is a type of deformation when the for deformed forces which are removed when which when are removed the object returns back to its original length or the object is obeying the hooke's law since it's obeying the hooke's law the graph is a constant or a straight line uh, which is passing through the origin and since the area under the curve for an object which uh, uh, so the area under the curve for an object which is elastically deformed is a triangle because till at this point the elastic limit of the object has been reached and the if we apply more force beyond this elastic uh, limit then the object will then the object will not experience Hooke's law hence first of all stress is not per propor directly proportional to strain and second force is also not directly proportional to the extension so since the area under the curve for an object which is elastically deformed is a triangle as we just saw here the um, the work done so the work done overall is equal to force times x so here the work was done by mg so it's equal to mgx but graphically the work done is the integral of the fx graph so you don't have to learn this term integral if some uh, people have learned calculus then they might be relate uh, then, then they can relate um, to the calculus part of this so work done is equal to force times the displacement then the work is done here by the force of gravity or the weight of the object times the extension of the spring and here in this case the area under the curve of the fx graph is equal to 1 upon 2 fx since it's a triangle and this is equal to the work done so this is equal to the work done by a particular object so this is one equation for work so if you have been given fx graph then the work done by a particular object for extending by so work done by a particular object which exerts a particular force on a spring for extending a that particular spring to um, a certain uh, length is equal to 1 upon 2 f times x